I'm doing a review for this book. It's Lily Allen, My Thoughts Exactly. Um, I want to make it clear from the start that I do like Lily Allen. I think she's a great lyricist. Um, when her first album came out, I recognised her as Keith Allen's daughter, but I didn't find her music particularly appealing. And if I'm really honest, I still don't like her style of singing and her fairly uncomplicated music. But when she released her second album, I was genuinely impressed. She was talking about things that no one else was talking about and which nearly all young women could relate to. And I think that her songs, The Fear and It's Not Fair are excellent. In her book, Alan gives details of her eventful life from her childhood up to the present day. As much as I liked seeing the pictures of Alan as she was growing up, I did think it was a shame that there were no pictures in the book of her after her teenage years. Um, Lily Allen is the daughter of Keith Allen, the actor, comedian and occasional pop star. Pop star. Her mum is a film producer. Alan has grown up in the media industry with the benefits that brings, such as mixing in those circles of people and having opportunities to work in the media. This upbringing also had the drawback of parents who were busy with their careers, as well as indulging in quite a lot of drugs. Keith Allen is an interesting character. I remember watching him on the comic strip where I thought he was brilliant. According to Lily, Keith wasn't the best dad in the world. Um, not even close. A pretty shit dad by all accounts. Lily Allen didn't have a stable upbringing, so whilst there were good people and good times, it couldn't be relied upon. Allen talks about how she was quite directionless as a teenager. She wasn't interested in school and she didn't have any burning ambitions. She hung out with friends and she stumbled around in different jobs. Because of her parents' careers, these weren't the sorts of jobs many of us ambled around in our teens. Alan did some work as a runner on TV production sets and waitressing at trendy restaurants. Alan moves in the circles of celebrities and rich people and she has parents that give her opportunities that most people never get close to. But all credit to her in that she took the opportunities and she made them her own. Due to the influences around her, the drugs and the opportunities for self-destruction, she could have fucked up her personal life a lot more than she did. Alan found success with her first album and she followed this up with another successful album. One of my favourite tracks by Lily Allen is It's Not Fair, which I think is a hilarious song and incredibly daring to release as a single. Far more shocking to me than the lyrics was Alan's declaration that when she made that record, She'd never had an orgasm. Wow, no wonder she was pissed off. She certainly made up for her slow start in the world of orgasms later on in life. Alan states that the industry preferred its females compliant and subservient, hungry, and preferably a bit cold and shivery on account of not wearing enough clothes. Vulnerable, in other words, and therefore more pliable and easier to get in line. That line being that what sells is youth, sex appeal and a lean body with no unsightly flabby female bits, not of body and not of mind. I think Alan makes excellent points here, but I can't see what actions she's done to combat these problems. Alan says that she wanted to rail against all that, but that she was still too confused about who she was and what she was doing. I think she's still using these excuses now. After I read this book, I had a look at Alan's Instagram and my first impression was that she looks underweight and my second was that she isn't wearing many clothes. I don't pay much attention to celebrities so I didn't know much about Alan's personal life until I read this book. After her second album, Alan then got married and had two children before making her third album. Talking about working after having children, she said... I wanted to go back to work because I felt stifled creatively. But working also seemed an easier option in many ways 
than the grinding task of tending to two very small children. I empathise with Alan here and in our nuclear family culture it is a conundrum we all struggle to solve. I knew that Alan had had kids and I thought that her song Hard Out Here was absolutely excellent. I was surprised to read in Alan's book that the video for Hard Out Here was criticised because of the skin colours of the dancers. Talk about a distraction from the point of the song. And seriously, I watched that video and my overriding impression was, God, it's so gross what women are pressured to do in the media industry. But no, critics choose to concentrate on the skin colour of the dancers rather than what they were doing. Insane. Alan was pressured by the music industry to behave as if she didn't have kids, as if she wasn't a mother. But instead of fighting against those unrealistic expectations, she seems to have bent herself to them and sacrificed her family in the process. Alan asserts that she was forced to record her third album and to complete the subsequent tour, even though she had two very small children, because she needed the money. Alan didn't take the option of having a smaller home and less outgoings. She also didn't take the option of just making the album and doing a few shows. Instead, she did the tour. Although I'm guessing the prostitutes and drugs must have eaten up a fair amount of the money she was so forced to earn. I found it difficult to have sympathy for Alan about her behaviour when she was away on tour, just as I wouldn't excuse a man doing it. Alan was very honest about the drugs she's taken. She was also honest about the music industry's doctors that prescribe prescri prescription drugs. Personally, I found that more dishonourable and disturbing. It seems like Alan did have some sort of breakdown during her tour for her third album, which contributed greatly to the breakdown of her marriage and her further breakdown proper. It sounds like she had a really rough time. Personally, I didn't think much of Sheezus. I thought it had a couple of good tracks and I think Hard Out Here is excellent, but most of it didn't do much for me. Alan says herself that she'll never be a great singer like Adele because she doesn't put her soul into her performance, and I agree. I think this also goes for other areas of Alan's life, such as her relationships, she may attach herself closely to the man she is with, but it doesn't seem that she really lets her guard down and goes the extra mile when she needs to. I think on her fourth album, No Shame, Alan has given more of herself. I liked No Shame. I thought it was more soulful than her other albums. There were a couple of tracks that felt like she'd really put her heart into them, such as Family Man and Apples. That one had me in tears. Um, I found this book very easy to read. I could hardly put it down. Alan is upfront about her life and things she has gone through or that she has got wrong. But it feels like her confessions are just surface information. I felt that Alan identified areas where she had gone wrong, but I wasn't convinced that she understood how to do things differently. That sounds really patronising, but um, she seemed to have repeated patterns more than she has broken them. Okay, um, the next book I'm going to read is The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark, so look out for that. And um, here's this one again. Okay, thank you.